Hi, so today I'm happy because I get to talk about one of my favourite topics which is the heart and the circulatory system. Um, I like this topic because I always see when I teach my students it um, how something that they've always found really difficult they suddenly get which makes me really happy. So first of all when we're talking about the heart you need to know about the structure of the heart, you need to know the names of the vessels feeding in and out and I'm going to help you with that. First of all is, is to remember that arteries carry blood away from the heart, always. So artery away, so that's the way to remember it, and veins carry blood towards the heart. Now the f heart has four chambers that you need to know. Those are the atrium, left and right, and the ventricles, um, left and right again. So I've got a diagram here which is really simplified, but I promise that it, it does provide the information you need to know. Now, I find it easiest learning it like a box because I think some of the heart diagrams out there are very complicated, but I will show you one later on so you know that I'm not lying to you. Right, so if we draw a box and we divide it into four, make sure the top two portions are smaller than the bottom two because the atrium, the atria, which is plural, are smaller than the ventricles. So if you divide your heart into a box, the top two compartments are the atria, the left and right. Make sure you get the left and right sides the right way around. It's the opposite way to how you would write it on a piece of paper, and that's because if you picked it up and put it on yourself, you'd see that they flip over and it would make sense. So on the left hand side you have the right atrium, on the right hand side you have the left atrium. Underneath you have the much larger compartments of the heart, so that's why we've drawn our boxes bigger, and this is the left and right ventricle. Okay, so we're going to draw two vessels coming out of the ventricles because blood enters via the atrium, flows through the atrium into the ventricles and flows out of the ventricles via two vessels. What did I say earlier? Those, the name of those vessels is the arteries and we just need to assign their correct scientific name. So, blood that enters via the left atrium into the left ventricle will leave the heart in the biggest artery, the biggest blood vessel in the body, and that's the aorta. So make sure you get the spelling of that right. Um, and if we go to the other side, blood which enters via the right atrium feeds into the right ventricle. That will lead via the pulmonary artery. And now I'm just going to talk a bit about naming. The word pulmonary means to do with the lungs. So that tells you that the pulmonary artery is feeding blood to the lungs. And there are other words which are kind of similar. So if you're talking about the heart, you use the word cardiac, hence cardiac arrest. If you're talking about the liver, we use hepatic. And if we're talking about the kidneys, we use renal. So if you have kidney failure, it's going to be renal failure. Anyway, going back to the heart. Because it's a circulatory system, it means it's a complete cycle. So it doesn't really matter where you start, as long as you kind of end up back where you started from. So I'm going to start, for some reason, at the lungs. So what happens in the lungs? Right, well the lungs are the organ where um, gas exchange takes place and oxygen enters our bloodstream. So what's going to happen, and I'll talk about this in another video to do with gas exchange, but oxygen is going to enter the blood via the capillaries and the alveoli in the lungs. It's going to enter the red blood cells and it's going to be carried in the pulmonary vein. Why? Because pulmonary means to the lungs. Vein, because we're bringing blood back to the heart. So it's going to be entering and it's going to be entering on the left hand side of the heart. Just a quick aside point, the two sides of the heart are split into oxygenated and deoxygenated sides. So as that sounds, it means that the heart is split into a side which contains oxygen and a side which doesn't. So the left hand side always contains oxygen and that's why I've drawn the vessels red, meaning that it's full of oxygenated blood. So, our oxygenated blood enters the heart via the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. From there it flows into the left ventricle and then it flows out of the heart via the aorta where it goes around the rest of the body in order to deliver oxygen to cells which are respiring as they need it for aerobic respiration. So you can imagine that the blood then becomes deoxygenated because all the cells have taken the oxygen. That means that we need to pick up more oxygen. However, this blood can't just return to the lungs by itself. It needs to go via the heart in order to create that pump. So we have our deoxygenated blood returning to the heart and this time remember it's going to enter via vein and we're going to call this vein the vena cava which is the main vein of the body. So it goes via the vena cava into the right atrium, flows from the right atrium into the right ventricle and then it's going to leave the heart via an artery as usual and this time we're going to call it the pulmonary artery. Why? Because it's to do with the lungs, because this blood will be returning to the lungs. So I've actually completed the cycle already. 
Um, and like I said, it doesn't really matter where you start. So you could have started at the left ventricle, feeding into the aorta, delivering oxygen around the body, deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium via the vena cava, flows into the right ventricle, out of the pulmonary artery, back round. Just a couple of things I want to point out. Every single artery in the body is oxygenated. There's one exception to this. I wonder if you worked that out already. And that is the pulmonary artery, because remember that's carrying deoxygenated blood back to the lungs. Also, the veins, every single vein is deoxygenated. One exception again, and you've guessed it, that's the pulmonary vein, because that's delivering oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. So the heart is super, super important. I would maybe argue it's the most important organ in our body. It's responsible for pumping blood all around our body, delivering oxygen to those cells which are respiring, so it's super important. I'm just going to quickly talk a bit more in detail about what's going on in the heart. So remember the heart is a massive muscle constantly contracting. So what happens is that blood which enters the atrium, it needs the atrium fills up and the pressure builds up and then that forces blood into the ventricles and you just need to know the name of the valves because th there are valves in between the atria and the ventricles and they control blood move movement effectively. So on the left hand side you have the bicuspid valves otherwise known as mitral valves. I really hate naming these things because it gets very complicated. If I was you I would remember their third name which is the atrioventricular valves because it makes sense to me that they're called that because they lie between the atrium and the ventricles. On the right hand side you have um, tricuspid valves and you can also call those atrioventricular valves and they're responsible for controlling blood flow between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Um, when the base of the heart contracts to force blood into the aorta or the pulmonary artery for example you have another set of valves called the semilunar valves and they sit in the base of those blood vessels and what they do is they snap shut after blood has moved through them to prevent blood flowing back into the heart because remember this blood is flowing around and needs to go the same direction all the time because if you have it flowing backwards then it pulls you might get some mixing between oxygenated deoxygenated blood um, I just wanted to mention one other thing which is the nodes um, not many examples asked for this but first of all there's a sinoatrial node the SAN that's at the top of the heart that acts as the heart's pacemaker and it ensures that the heart is beating um, the right number of beats per minute because remember you're going to have your heart beating faster if you're exercising because you'll need more oxygen being delivered to those muscles and you'll slow down your um, heartbeat when you're asleep for example because it's not as important. Um, so that initiates the heartbeat, that means that the atrium on both sides contract, then you have an atrioventricular node, the AVN, you've guessed it, that lies between the atrium, atrium and the ventricles. And what that does is it acts as a bit of a delay station and allows the atrium to fill with blood so that they don't contract too quickly before the atria are actually filled. Um, and what it also does is, so the wave of excitation, so that's the electrical impulse which is causing the heartbeat, it then gets conducted down some fibres which are found in the middle of the heart called the septum. And these are special fast conducting fibres called Purkheim fibres or Purkinje fibres. And what that does is it causes the electrical impulse to pass to the base of the heart and causes the heart to contract from the base upwards, which again is important because you want to force that blood out of the heart. You don't want it pooling at the bottom because otherwise it'd get really stale and horrible. I know it sounded super technical, but I hope you found that useful and that it cleared up any misconceptions. Um, as always, big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me any comments. And remember to like my Facebook page, the link is in my... YouTube description because there you can pose me questions and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. See you guys, bye!